hear me out on it. I'm gonna start with a wild mouse study with this compound, but there's a lot of human data behind it. So I'm gonna talk about that as well. Okay, this study was published in Nutrients. They took mice and they put them on a very high fat diet to try to induce obesity. This is commonly done, okay? What they found is that when they added simple TMG, trimethylglycine, or betaine, into their diets, it literally prevented the formation of white adipose tissue. It acted as a blockade to tissue, fat tissue forming, even when these mice were basically trying to get obese by giving them a very high calorie, high fat diet. Doesn't mean they didn't gain weight or didn't gain some fat, but it had a major preventative effect by blocking fat from forming. Let's investigate what's going on here. And I, now I never like to dangle what the compound is that I'm talking about, I already mentioned it, it's TMG, right? Trimethylglycine. So I'll explain a little bit more of what that is in just a second so you can understand how you can use this. And after today's video, I put a link down below for Element Electrolytes. They're a sponsor on this channel. If you're going through any kind of like caloric deficit and you need something to sip on that doesn't have calories, that's gonna satiate you, curb your appetite, Element's the way to go. That stuff absolutely saves me so many times when I'm fasting or when I'm in a serious caloric deficit. Something about the saltiness with it, with 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, 60 milligrams magnesium, the sodium just helps curb my appetite. It has something to do with NST neurons in the hindbrain, so essentially like when I'm craving something sweet and I give my body something salty, it kind of curbs that. But also, I just burn through electrolytes like crazy because I'm exercising a lot and there's a lot of reasons why. So anyhow, they have lots of different flavors. They also have a new sparkling edition. So that link is down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. Again, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas down below. So the other part of this study with mice, before I get into the human piece is, and this is the part that unfortunately isn't looked at a lot, even in this study, there was a major increase in what's called mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, so what this means is that not only did it block fat from forming, but it increased the amount of mitochondria that were in the overall muscle cells. This means that you now have more places for fat loss to occur, because fat burning occurs in the mitochondria. Like if you go for a run, the mitochondria, the fat is going to come in via carnitine palmitoyl transferase, it's gonna transfer into the cell, into the mitochondria, and it's going to ultimately be oxidized for fuel. Now, if you have less mitochondria, that's less literal places for fat burning to occur. So if you have mitochondrial biogenesis, you have more fat burning sites, plain and simple. The other thing that was really interesting in this rodent model study was they actually had an improvement in insulin resistance despite having overfeeding of saturated fat and high fat. So we know that by indu to induce insulin resistance in an animal model, you feed them high amounts of fat in a very high caloric state. We know that yes, Sugar is not good for insulin resistance, but the inability to deal with sugar is usually like a downstream side effect of insulin resistance in the first place. Not always the main cause, although it certainly can be. High fat, in this case, in a clinical setting, don't come getting upset with me about this. This is literally done in clinical settings all the time. They induce insulin resistance by giving them high fat meals. It doesn't mean that fat is bad, it just means that when you have a ridiculous amount of saturated fat, it will absolutely induce a certain level of insulin resistance in an animal model. Point is, is TMG still sort of reversed the insulin resistance effect here, which is wild. So then when we pivot over to the human model stuff, it gets really fascinating. So there was a study published in Nutrients that was a systematic review, six different studies and meta-analysis, huge stuff. They found that when TMG was supplemented in humans, there was a reduction in total fat mass, a reduction in body fat percentage down to about 2.45%, all while increasing or maintaining lean body mass, which means it was specifically targeted targeting fat without targeting any muscle. So we've seen now, it literally can block belly fat. We've seen the blockage of fat occurring in that rodent model study. And we're seeing the human model study seeing it actually increases fat oxidation as well. One of the reasons that it probably increases fat oxidation so much is simply the fact that it's improving muscle mass too. So there are increases in mTOR, what's called MyOD, MEF2B. These are all either transcription factors, signaling devices, or literal like transcription factors for growth factors. What all that means is there is a direct relationship with TMG supplementation in animal models and human models for muscle growth. Okay, there is a poultry study I've talked about in another video where like, 
uh, poultry farmers were giving chickens TMG because it was literally making the breast meat bigger, all while not adding extra fat. And they saw with that increases in mTOR, MyOD, MEF2B. That doesn't matter to you. All you really care about probably is the end result. And the end result is more muscle with less fat. So how does TMG actually block fat from accumulating? There's a couple of different theories on it. For one, it's the increase in what is called CD36, so the increase in carnitine palmitoyl transferase. So essentially, you're increasing the amount of transporters that can get fat into a mitochondria in the first place. So essentially, before it has a chance to really store, it's having a better opportunity to potentially get burned. So TMG could work really well pre-workout because it does actually hit pretty quick. So you could take it before exercise. You could also take it throughout the day, but it seems as though taking it before exercise might actually induce more fat burning, and it might actually have a carryover effect and prevent fat accumulation later in the day. So what I want you to remember is that burning fat is always a balance of episodes where you're actually burning a lot of fat and episodes where you're just trying to keep fat accumulation at bay. Because every time you eat, of course you're going to run the risk of putting on some fat. Your deficits and surpluses are happening in like nanoseconds, right? They're not happening I am purposely in a deficit at this very moment in time for the next six hours. It's going to happen like when you eat, you're in a surplus, then you're in a deficit, you're micro deficits and micro surpluses. What we're looking at with TMG is limiting the negative impact of those micro surpluses. So you're blocking some of the formation of white adipose tissue during that period and enhancing the periods of fat burning during the other periods. So when you're in a deficit, you're getting more out of it. When you're in a surplus, you're getting less out of it. So less risk of burning muscle and more reward of burning fat, and less risk of gaining fat and more reward of burning it. So you're just limiting those risks and adding the benefit. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.